start. Hey everyone, I'm Cynthia Conte for Ring TV. I have a special panel of ladies and a gentleman. We are going to be talking about something that needs to be talked about. Women in boxing, the women warriors who have started this all for the many women that are coming into this business and also even in sport. This is a story that I... I'm happy that I get to help tell their stories and also Joe Santoliquido from Ring TV who wrote about their stories. First off, I wanna introduce Kathy Duva, CEO, Main Events Promotions, Kelly Swanson, the president of Swanson Promotions, Jolene Mazzone, VP of Operations and Matchmaker for Main Events, Nancy Rodriguez, Senior Executive of World Boxing Council and Supreme Boxing, Giandra LaBeouf, she is a boxing and entertainment reporter, host and producer, Bad Culture TV, and Brittany Goosen, Vice President, Operations of TGB Promotions. Welcome, ladies and one gentleman. Thank you, I appreciate the time that you guys have taken out to speak about your story, and um, I just, I'm, I'm honored. I'm really honored because I wanted to, I was the one that asked Doug Fisher and Joe that I wanted to do a live moderate. Uh, I wanted to moderate this panel of women because this is something that's never been done. Joe had the, uh, the, 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 the story of wanting to do this. Joe, how did you get, how did you even start this? Well, I was talking to you and uh, remember we did a piece. It was about, uh, it was about two months ago now mm -hmm. and you and I are talking. And we were talking in general about the podcast you're working on. And, and I think we went off for a second and you mentioned to me about some things that, that really kind of, I mean, I'm talking with a furrowed brow because I had a furrowed brow when you were talking to me about this, that um, just how some individuals in the sport of boxing uh, took some liberties, did some things that they shouldn't have done. Um, Put, put their hands on you. And we just got into talking just off on the side of that. And I'm thinking to myself, wait a second here. You know, if it happened to her, you know, has it gone on with other things and other women in this sport? Have other women been treated with ignorance and disrespect? And, and that's what started it. Um, I started to, uh, I, I remember talking to Kelly about this and, uh, uh, this has eight bylines, you know, uh, my name is going to be on top, but I mean, it's going to be from you ladies and your narratives. Uh, but Kelly stressed to me, she says, Joe, if, you, if you're going to do this, you got to do it with legitimate women, women that are in the sport um, and legitimate women that are involved in the sport and, and, you know, and, and, and get paid. I mean, this is their livelihoods. This is what they do. And uh, we created a list uh, my, uh, you know, seven women warriors, seven samurai on, uh, what you've faced, what you've battled, what you've overcome. And, and basically maybe too your message to future generations of women that are trying to get into the sport of boxing and what, you know, you ladies putting your foot down now could possibly, well, probably will prevent any of the BS that you got, you ladies had to, had to encounter when you came up in this business. Okay, well, Joe, I want to get to it because we are going to be, we're going to, I have to get everyone's story since this is a large mm -hmm. uh, panel. But Kathy Duva, I'm going to go to you. You are, yes, raise your brows. You have been a boxing trailblazer. You, uh, Hall of Famer. Huh? She's the Hall of Famer. Yes, she is. You were, uh, congratulations. You were in the, inducted in the class of 2020 in the International Boxing Hall of Fame. You are a trailblazer for many women, for all of us that are sitting on this panel. You've done what a lot of people may never get to do. Kathy Duva, welcome. Thank you. Uh, can you share a little bit of your experience being in this industry for, I mean, for years? I don't want to say because I don't, you know, some people get a little upset, but you're like the godmother here for all of us. <laughs> yeah, thank you. Okay, I'll take it. Uh, yeah, it's been um, over 42 years now. So, I've, yeah, I've been around a long time. Um, I had to laugh when I, you know, with the stuff that Joe was talking about, and I, when I spoke to him directly, um, you know, I made these points and I'll make them again. Um, we've all experienced the kinds of things he's talked about. And if you're a woman living in the world, you've experienced them. I'm not sure that it's, that's peculiar to boxing at all. Um, uh, in fact, I think that in a lot of ways, I get a lot more respect 
uh, particularly from the fighters, um, that, that, that a lot of women that are out working in the world get normally. And um, yeah, it, it was hard one, but um, I, I, uh, I, every t there's been so much in the news lately about uh, women in, in positions of authority, women in, uh, you know, out in the world, uh, taking on roles that were typically considered men's roles when I was growing up because I've seen the most change of all of you, that's for sure. Um, and I keep hearing, you know, the, the things that have been discussed, particularly politically lately, and everything they talk about applies to us. It's not just boxing, it's the whole world and it's changing. And I think it's all changing in a good way. Um, I've seen a lot of, uh, my God, when I started out, they didn't, al they didn't allow women in the weigh-ins. So uh, when there were women that came before me that, that weren't allowed in the press section. So <laughs> uh, Patty Dreyfus uh, had to fight that battle uh, and she won it. But um, we've come a long way and we still have a way to go. You've been, you've been, you've had, uh, you've had the promotions company with your, with your husband, uh, Dan, yeah, Dan Duba, 1979. You've come up in this sport. How do you think, with the females on the panel and the females that are coming, that are the future representatives of boxing and, and sport, what can they do different? If they want to be a promoter like you, what can they do to get the level of success that you've had and not deal with the bullshit that we've all de dealt with? You know, my, my answer to that is always just don't take no for an answer. It's been my, that's been my, my advice to every young woman I've ever met that said, what do I have to do? Not just to be in boxing again, to become successful at anything. And, You've got to be better and smarter. You know, you have to dance backwards in heels. That's, that's the job. So um, I wish it wasn't that way. And I see some changes where, you know, it's, it's, getting, it's getting a little better. Um, I think your generation, the men in your generation, um, are a lot better than the men in mine. I know that for a fact. So uh, that, that, that makes it, you know, that takes a little bit of the challenge out of it. But it's still there. And for someone to suggest that that they're not going to have to work harder and be better to be as successful as a man in boxing or anywhere else then they're they're kidding themselves right now yeah all right well thank you kelly swanson president of swanson communications you know i i told joe about you i go i even told nancy remember i go i am terrified of you i you're <laughs> there's something about you that i i am like i respect you highly you are a trailblazer you, over 25 years ex in, years of experience in the sports industry, but there's this presence about you that you better know what you're talking about when you approach her or else she's gonna tell it like it is. If you don't know your shit, she's just gonna walk away. And that's the kind of attitude that you have and I love. Uh, you, obviously people don't know you. You've worked with Mayweather for since the beginning of his career to the end of his career. You are a person that creates, um, creates PR campaigns. You are also an influential woman. You are one of the, let me write that, let me read this right, the Yahoo Sports list of the 25 most powerful people in boxing and in sport. You're the first woman. Kelly Swanson, talk about your role as a female in not just sport, but also in boxing. Uh, thanks. Uh, thanks for having me on the panel. And I'm going to parlay off of Kathy's comments because I have to give her a lot of respect. Um, I can remember early in my career when I went and tried to sit at the table of the HBO executive offices and Kathy was right up there with Dan and I was probably asked to sit in the back row um, and just listen, which was fine because I was, uh, you know, fairly new. And, you know, fortunately for me, when I first got into boxing, I was able to work with uh, Riddick Bowe, who at the time was not the heavyweight champ, but soon became the heavyweight champ. So I think I had a lot of firsthand experiences, um, not necessarily having to climb the ladder in boxing. However, I did work for a sports PR company that did do boxing. And although I didn't work on those accounts um, directly, I was made aware of the sport and what was happening in the sport. But I can, I do remember Kathy uh, very early in my career and I thinking to myself well there she is if she can do it I can do it too and um, I do think that it took a lot of um, I felt intimidated at first and maybe that's why I don't feel as intimidated now but 
I think back then there weren't that many people and definitely women at the table. And still to this day, boxing is a very small industry. There aren't a lot of spaces to create your own uh, opportunities, but if you stick in there and keep trying, you will find your way through it as a testament of all the women on the panel today. So uh, yes, a lot of hard work, dedication. I worked with a lot of fighters who were champions and I saw firsthand how hard they had to work. So I had to work just as hard and uh, they were, they actually helped me figure it out. But I do believe that the people that um, the men and women that came before me and helped guide me in the sport gave me the opportunity to be, to have the career that I have today. Thanks. You are a, you are a force to be reckoned with in the sport. Many, many women look up to you. I sure do. I mean, I'm just, like I said, I'm just very intimidated by you sometimes just to even approach you. Jolene Mazzone, this is my first time ever meeting you. Yes. Uh, pleasure meeting you. You Me are, too. you are match, excuse me, main events, legendary matchmaker. You and also the vice president of operations. Uh, you're the only woman in the world making champion, world championship <clears throat> level fights. And uh, you're a pioneer in boxing. How does it feel when you know that you were at that level at the time and you see where boxing has gone for females? Talk about your thoughts on that. Um, well, I start, don't forget, I started off answering phones. Yes. I didn't want to get into this business whatsoever. I just needed a job at the time. I was 22 years old. It was a job. And I kind of moved my way up the ladder. So... My advice to women within this business or just in society is don't try too hard. Just be you, say it how it is, and, you know, just, just keep it moving. I mean, that's what, you know, when I first started, I didn't get any respect. I was a receptionist, and then I was a travel coordinator. No one gave a shit about me. I was nobody, you know? I mean, it's, it's true. I was nobody. Um, and then just moving my way up, people started respecting more because the, the first encounter I had mostly with men within this business is you don't know shit about boxing. And then when I would sit next to certain guys and basically choreograph the fight to them as it's going on, they'd look at me and say, holy shit, where'd you learn this? Well, you just sit back and you watch and you listen and you watch all the men fight and you watch all the drama and you watch all the egos and then you step in and you save the day with a smile. There'll be a lot of cursing on my end, but <laughs> you just have to sit back, watch everything go haywire. And then I believe as, especially the women on this panel, we will always come in and save the day and fix everything, you know? And I think women coming into this business, my biggest advice to them is do not try too, too hard. And please, for the love of God, don't be a groupie. That's, that's my advice. Because there are many that come in and everybody we deal with, we're lucky, like Kelly said. You know, when I came into main events, I was dealing with Lennox Lewis and... You know, Pernell Whitaker, I, people don't get that. But I looked at them as they were people just like all of us. I didn't, you know, try too hard. Just be yourself. You know, that's my biggest advice to women within this business. Why did you, when you said you didn't care about boxing, I mean, you're at the level of what many women will not be able to attain. You're making fights, and you, there's a reason why you were named Matchmaker of the Year by the North American Boxing Federation. Why did you decide to take the matchmaking position? Oh, my God, it was thrown on me. <laughs> it was. I'm not even going to lie. It was, I'm not even going to lie. <laughs> it was just like, Kathy one day was like, you've done everything within this company, you know, from the bottom up. I'm going to start matchmaking. And I said, okay, let me pretend I know what I'm doing. And it worked out. So she didn't pretend. She knew what she was doing. <laughs> <laughs> I guess they always say fake it till you make it. But eventually you're going to have to learn on the, yeah. on the fly. Oh, you do. And, that, and that's what a lot of, no one on this panel to this day, every show, every event, we learn something new 
every single time. Yeah. Nope. Let me ask this, um, Jolene, what was it like, and we were going over this, on some of those meetings there as you're, as you're, as you're in that new role and you're in a room with probably, you're probably the only woman in this room making these fights. What was the reaction of some of these guys to you? I think by that time, a lot of people were scared of me. And <laughs> they didn't want to Shocking. challenge me. You know, look, I always, I'm a true believer in pleading my case in a sense when making a fight. This is why I think it's a good fight. Give me a reason why it's not. Let's have a conversation. Mm -hmm. Unlike whether it's male or another female, I don't want to put men in only this, where it's you're fighting this guy because I said so. I'm going to have an explanation. So I think they appreciate that. The fighters, mm -hmm. the fighters especially, because the fighters, I have no problem telling them exactly how it is. Yeah. You know, when they're but, acting up or what, I have no problem with that. But you were telling me, though, it took some time, though, with certain folks. Oh, it folks. took a lot of time. With certain yes. folks. And, and, and probably, and, and that's why we're talking, and that's why I, I, I wanted to do this story. I'm going to go here. I mean, it probably took some time because you're a woman. Absolutely. All of us have gotten called sweetie, honey, darling, and we had that conversation, too. <laughs> All of us smile when that, when he just said that when you yeah, said that. Yeah, you know, right and it's it's and at times it's a term of endearment. I get that, and there's a time that you could use it. But when I'm negotiating, you know, deals, and somebody says, "Don't worry, sweetie, we'll get this done," that's a problem. You mm -hmm. know, so it's just we've all been through it. Yeah, of us are you know, all of us have been through it. All right, well, we're gonna come back to some of these questions because I know I have more questions for the ladies that I, we just spoke, but I also, we have Nancy Rodriguez. You're the Senior Executive of World Boxing Council and also for Supreme Boxing. You're everywhere. Nancy, you're, you are everywhere. You're creating the Green Belt Challenge. You're doing stuff for Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame. You're in the bubble right now for the fights. Uh, can you just kind of explain a little bit? I mean, you're also in the, you're honored for uh, Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame last, was it last year? Is it 2019? Yeah, because yeah, we're almost done with 2020. But Nancy yeah. Rodriguez, uh, welcome. But first, for World Boxing Council, I'm not the senior executive. I'm, I do the PR. Oh, you're the PR, okay. And run the Los Angeles office. Okay. Uh, I want to tell Kelly Swanson, I've always looked up to her. She knows that what, the first time that I met her in Vegas, that I actually saw her face to face, didn't I cry, Kelly? I was crying. I got really emotional. Because yes, you did. I felt I felt very honored, but terrible that you were crying. <laughs> it's not at all wrong. It's not what you think. No, but yes, it was very sweet, Nancy. Very sweet. And then we get to, and now we get to work on each other. So maybe now I get on her nerves or something. <laughs> I remember you did tell me when you first met her, you cried. I did. I did. Yeah. You know, I always tell you, Nancy. Yeah. So Nancy, I, you've been in this business. I mean, I, I remember I met you and you've always said really positive things are always about uplifting women in, especially in this sport. You're coming from the music industry. Talk about your time briefly being in this sport. Well, I came into boxing through Bam Bam Brandon and Rios. He, he's the one that pulled me out of radio to come and work with him in boxing. I love boxing, but I didn't know anything about, you know, actually lifting up a fighter and you know getting him famous which I'm very proud to have done with Brandon um, but still you know when my career ended with him I was like what do I do what do I do now and I ended up starting Supreme Boxing that became one of the best websites um, for boxing social media wise and and then right after that Don Jose Suleiman passed away Mauricio reached out to me and pulled me in to work with WBC, which that has been a huge blessing. And it's, it's been, that's where the whole roller coaster happened with me. You know, when, you know, I know this, this is about men, but really these women, there's a lot of power trips also between women. And, and sometimes um, it's not only the men that are affecting you, it's, it's, it's the women in the business, you know, it's, it's a power trip. So I just try to stay in my lane, do what I have to do support 
all women support the men. And, and I feel that I've been given that respect. I'm in a bubble right now with what, like a hundred men and one, I'm the only woman. And every single one of those men respect me. Yeah. All right. Well, do you feel that with the, the short amount of time that you've been in this, uh, in this, in boxing, can you see the changes in women? I mean, you said that there are power trips. I mean, we are a very small group of women that we, we know each and every one. But as more women come into the sport, do you feel that there could be a change? As far as uh, the of women? How women are treated with, uh, amongst each other and how they're treated amongst men. Um, I think individually we can do what we can. You know, we can't change other people. We can't control. You know, what has happened to me in the past, it, it doesn't define who I am. What defines who I am is the choices that I make. And I choose to be kind to everyone. I choose to help the industry the most that I can. And, and if there's a new woman coming along or a new kid, a, a guy, I'll be there to help them if I can. And that's the only thing you can do. Lead by example. You've always had but, um, art. Excuse me, excuse me, Cynthia. But you've had some ignorance too, Nancy. Totally, yeah, ignorance yeah. Too. I mean, I don't know how much I can say, but when I first got into the WBC, some of the people that introduced me to to the WBC ended up saying that I was that I had to sleep with someone in order to gain that position, and I was like, "Are you serious? Like my my work doesn't speak for itself." Um, how many years ago was this? This was about seven seven years ago. Or the first time that I supervised a fight. I'm, I'm literally walking into the ring and he's, he's telling me, what are you doing? I'm supervising the fight. And he laughed at me and said, you, you, you need to crawl before you think you can walk. You don't, you know, basically, you don't belong here. You shouldn't be supervising. How did that make you feel? At that moment, I wanted to sit on, in the corral in one of the chairs and just go like this. But then I snapped out of it and I got in the ring even, even I stood up taller, honestly. Like, hey, here I am, you can't get me down. Nancy, do you <laughs> think it was said to you because you were a woman? I think so. I'm, I'm almost positive and-, and Absolutely. And honestly- Absolutely. Honestly, not too long ago, he apologized. He called me up to apologize mm -hmm. to me for that incident. So I commend him for that. Yeah. Um, because you we got a little push. I heard. <laughs> I heard. Yeah. That ha so that incident happened a couple of, well, you, you just started recently uh, supervising ago. fights. Okay, so this is very recent then. That was at the step up on um, Miguel Cotto's last fight, I believe. To Giander LaBeouf, you, are, you wear many hats. You're a reporter, you're a boxing reporter, you're a boxing host, you're an entertainment reporter, mm -hmm. you're a producer for boxing, WWE. Um, and there, I don't know, there's nothing that you don't do, and you're a mentor to me. Giander LaBeouf, welcome. Uh, you. I love, you know, I, w I haven't been in this sport long compared to all of you ladies. I'm the, with the, the least amount of years, but I've seen your come up in the entertainment business um, along with your boxing and Giandro. Congratulations. Okay. Thank you. Sorry okay. about the dog. Right. I thought the dog was getting ready to bark. He waited until it was my turn. He's been quiet the whole time. But, you know, it's quite a journey. I didn't intend to start this way. I started as a hobbyist. I just really love the sport. You know, I watched the sport with my dad growing up with Wide World of Sports and all of that on the weekends. And, you know, I was strictly a hobbyist. I was a blogger. I just enjoyed the sport. And I was encouraged to take it a little bit more seriously. Uh, I was, con I was uh, encouraged to, that the sport needed more diversity of voices. There were no black women working in the sport that I knew of. And it was just kind of a, an interesting lone wolf type of journey to, to covering the sport and, and learning the, and really learning the sport, not just watching it as a fan. And I've appreciated the journey, but it's, it's been a long one that started in 2012. You mentioned that you are the only black woman and I don't make this ever about color, uh, gender, anything, but we don't, there's, there's not that many uh, African-American females. I, I mean, I'm one of the very, the brown ones, but for you, do you find it, do you find it that they are lacking some of those, uh, some, uh, some females in that industry, in our industry? I think what it amounts to is there's really no one to look to. 
And that alone discourages a lot of young black female journalists for even pursuing this path. You know, you can look at other industries and there's the Carrie Champions and the Michelle Beatles and the Oprah Winfrey's and the Robin Roberts and all of these people who worked within the sports industry as reporters, as hosts, et cetera. But there really hasn't been anyone in boxing to really fit that role. So with that, those are the type of things I try to keep in mind when I'm talking to younger people who are looking in, to get into journalism. And I encourage it because it's one of the sports that's, it's still intimate enough that you, there is mentorship and there are people you can network with and connect with to, to learn the way if you're serious about the sport. I think what discourages a lot of people too is this is a hard grind. When you work in, it's not sexy, it's not glamorous, it's a lot of time in gyms, it's a lot of time with ornery athletes who, you know, they might not feel like talking to the media, they're, they're losing weight, they're preparing for fights, these people are getting beat, these men and women are getting beat up for a living, they're not, you know, throwing a ball and catching it, it's a completely different animal than any other sport, and I think a lot of that is discouraging to black female journalists because it's so different from where we the spaces where we typically see ourselves represented and Cynthia here uh Giandra yeah. brought up a couple of um very well very vile things if you could just maybe one story there Giandra I think you were talking to me about a situation at ringside and someone came up from behind you I mean, it happens all the time. I mean, there's a lot of layers I could talk about to my experience. It's probably not the place and time from the sexism to, to racism to gender bias. Like there's a lot of different things you can talk to. People think that, well, men in the industry think it's okay to put their hands on you, like Jolene mentioned with the honeys and the sweeties and it's supposedly flattering. Everyone wants to put their arm around you and, oh, you look so nice today, you know, and you know, just touching you. And stop touching people. Stop touching people. If you wouldn't do it to it, it, your yeah, male it was a bit, There was a little bit more touching than just, just touching. I mean, I've had all type of inappropriate things said and done to me. So covering the sport, I've had fighters in their camps give me room keys. I've had them say inappropriate things. People think just because you don't look a certain way that it does not happen to you, which is a whole nother layer. But, you know, there's a lot of inappropriate things that happen during the course of covering a fight that... I mean, all these ladies, I'm sure, have had their own experiences with the same thing. Now, now how do you deal with that? Because I'm, I'm angry, <laughs> even now a little bit. I, I, I how, did, how did you deal with it? How do you deal with it? You know, it was tough. At first, I was scared because I was new. I didn't know anybody. I didn't, I've never had an experience like that before because I had come from a corporate environment, a city government mm -hmm. environment where the line is very clear about touching, about behavior, about sexual harassment. All of that is very, very clearly defined. But mm -hmm. uh, within sports, it's a little bit different. It's a totally different atmosphere. And I didn't know what to do. So a lot, a lot of it, I just, ah, you know, you're trying to you be a little coquettish and genteel and you pass it off like, oh, you're so crazy. And it makes you feel very diminished and like you don't belong there. And it's like, well, if they're not taking me seriously, maybe I don't belong here. And that's why they're treating me that way. But it took instance, multiple instances like that for me to say, fuck you, leave me alone. You don't want the other person to come out. But it took me a while to feel comfortable saying that. I got a feeling in the future, with any of these powerful women that are on this conference, Zoom conference with us, if you said anything to any one of them, I got a feeling whoever put their hands on you, they'd be removed. You know, in it, the it's future. rough. It's rough though, because there are people who feel comfortable with that. Yeah. And, you know, it's just a matter of treating people as individuals. You know, I'm sure there are women who work within the sport who are okay with that. I'm not okay with that. Mm -hmm. And, but, you know, sometimes you have to reteach people before mm -hmm. they realize you are not the one to play with. Mm -hmm. So mm -hmm. I don't have those issues as much now, but you know, well, you know, your, your, your homegirl liked it. So it must be okay. No, 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 no. If yeah. that's fine with them, that's fine with them, but it's not fine with me. Yeah. Okay. Well, thank you, Giandra. Last but not least, we got the badass boss bay, the tough <laughs> B, Brittany Goosen. Okay. Brittany Goosen, you are boxing royalty. You're uh Uncle Dan and Joe Goosen and your dad, Tom Brown, uh, from Goosen and TGB Promotions. 
you are the youngest, but you are, you have been, you grew up around boxing. Brittany. Talk about what it was like from both sides of the family to grow up around boxing. I think that's why my experience is so different too. I think also I, no one was going to do anything to me. I mean, I had, I came in with respect and um, I got like a head start. I didn't have to worry about any guy doing it. In fact, I was like, why don't they ever hit on me? It doesn't even make sense. But um, yeah, I, I don't know anything else but boxing. That's all I saw. That's all we had fighters over. You know how my uncles are too, and my dad. And so it just, this, was, this is my world. This is all I know and have ever known. You graduated from Cal State University of Northridge and you went into the cosmetics industry and you're trail you're blazing your own trail in that in that field. Uh, I know after your uncle passed away, why did you decide to come into boxing? You could have created your own cosmetics line and just been Brittany Goosen cosmetics. You know, it was actually my mom's idea and pushing. She and keeping with the family theme, there's no one else who's gonna work these kind of hours and kill themselves for this like a family member okay like I'm here in this office constantly 24 7 because I actually genuinely really really care because it's my dad's company because it's our family name and our tradition and I mean yeah I could have gone that route but everything works out for a reason I think I'm supposed to be here you are the VP of operations for TGB promotion. You know, that's never really, that was a title Chris de Blasio gave me <laughs> at a press conference once. <laughs> what do you label yourself? What, what do you call your, what's your title? Well, remember Kelly one time on the conference call when you guys asked me what title to put and I said princess and everyone was like, <laughs> <laughs> you okay. can't do that. So. I like it? Huh? I like it. You know, you have grown up around fighters and we see the the fighters that are the, the fighters that you take care of, I would say. Uh, I don't want, I mean, can we, uh, I could say that you could kind of babysit them to make sure they're on their best behavior. Do they respect you? And if you give them a hard no, do they listen to you? Yes. Why? I've, I, because I'm a bitch and they don't want to, <laughs> they don't want to see what happens if they don't. Okay. No, it's, um, I, I have brothers too. I, I treat, I know how to deal with athletes and I know, of course they're cranky some days and moody the others, but I've never been disrespected by a fighter. I've had some disrespectful situations, but I don't think that had anything to do with being a woman. I also write checks and deal with their money. And if I'm there telling them, you know, this fight's been switch to this and I'm taking a thousand dollars off, they're going to disrespect whoever's there, male or female. It's like now I'm messing with their money and their livelihood, but I never felt like they don't listen to me or they don't because I'm a woman. And again, that probably is because of who my family is and also my attitude. Mm -hmm. I've seen you, uh, when I first started, you were always in the background. You, I, I've always seen you in the background and then you've taken a bigger step to be hosting press conferences. <laughs> You don't enjoy it? Well, you're great yeah. at it. I I get really like nervous and shy. I'm better in the back, but get out of here. You shy, Brittany? Get out of here. I'm shy when I don't know people. I, oh, I okay. up after like then you can't you can't get rid of me. You can't shut me <laughs> up. But in the yeah, I get a little nervous sometimes. But I figure no one's really listening to me now anyway. As a no, they I, do. I mean, you've more, you're even more recognized. You were also honored at the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame during the grand opening of their exhibit, their museum. Were you a little shocked about that? Were you thrown yeah, out? Yeah, that was really sweet. I think I cried. I was emotional. Brittany never I cried. Can't. I know, I don't cry, yeah. I was scared she wasn't going to show up, honestly. <laughs> yeah. That's more like it. Uh, no, I don't cry. My brother told me I had an ugly cry face when I was like 13, <laughs> so like I don't cry publicly. Mm -hmm. But... Um, that was very sweet and very nice of the Nevada Boxing Hall of Fame. And it was a great night. And I still want to, I love those pictures. It's so sweet. Have it hanging in my office. So, you and her what? uncle's going in tomorrow, uh, next year. Dan, go, Dan goes in next year, correct. Kathy, you go in. Uh, Ms. Swanson, uh, for what I can turn around and what sway I have, uh, as I promised you, I put you on my list. Ooh. With, uh, a couple of other folks, so we'll see where it goes. Bring but I believe, 
I Are believe, you, I, Kelly, I believe you're a Hall of Famer. I mean, you- you Clean that up. I have never made it on the ballot, uh, the ballot vote, what's it called? The uh, ballot box or what have you. And sometimes I think that, yes, there is feedback like Cynthia's, in all honesty, that I'm intimidating. And uh, But, you know, I uh, people misunderstand that a little bit. And this all ties into that touching thing, too. I can remember mm -hmm. early on in the press room when I was sitting at the front table there and not one single person doesn't come in that room and ask to give you a hug or want to kiss you on the cheek. And I didn't, I was not raised like that. And so I kind of just put a stop to it. I'm like, no, 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 you don't have to touch me. And now could I have said it in a nicer way? Of course. Could I have a better demeanor sometimes? Absolutely. I am not perfect, but you know, I had to work with some really, really tough fighters. And when you have to work with Bernard Hopkins, who <laughs> demands, you know, to go after them and don't let them talk to you. And, and Floyd was a perfectionist. And, you know, no excuses on my part, as the fighters say. But, you know, people don't see that other side. And I always took my job very seriously. I didn't necessarily want to be there to be hanging around the press room because I had just come off of 12 hours of traveling on a press tour. Mm -hmm. And, you know, I always felt like people would come to fight week and just be so happy to be a part of fight week when I had just worked my ass off yeah. for three months, not seeing my family, not sleeping on some of these big giant promotions. So touching wasn't my thing. I did feel that, you know, some men took advantage of that. And I just, I just didn't get into it. But I think, you know, part of, Part of what maybe has happened, because I do accept and acknowledge uh, comments like Cynthia's that, you know, I've never been one to buddy up to people in boxing. I try to do my job and I feel I know what I'm doing, but has lent itself to some situations like never being nominated for the Boxing Hall of Fame. And I've spent, you know, a good long time you know, dedicating my life to this industry. And mm -hmm. so if I was a man and I acted the way I do, would that still be the case? I don't know. Maybe people think I should be sweeter and nicer, but, mm -hmm. you know, I learned from the best. I learned from past. I watched Kathy Duva be tough as nails. I watched Jolene get her job done and come up through the ranks. And, mm -hmm. you know, watching you young women keep coming up, you know, I just feel like we can all work together. But I did see toughness firsthand, and I just feel that sometimes that's misinterpreted as being unfriendly or not being approachable. And Cynthia, next time you see me, you're more than happy to come. I'm gonna hug you next time. <laughs> <laughs> With a mask on. Kelly, could, you, <laughs> okay, okay. could you relate a yeah. little bit of the story you know that I you mean? spoke to me you know? about with the, uh, in reference to the conference room and the HBO meeting at one time? Yeah, well, that was just a situation where I felt that, you know, it took a much longer time to, uh, you know, not be asked to just take notes, even though I was allowed in, right? I, especially when Riddick Foe was became champion. And, you know, we had the opportunity to do a lot of creative things um, at HBO. And I was so young then, like I didn't even, it was nice that they invited me in, not based on I'm a woman, but just based yeah. on the fact that I was young and I didn't have much experience at all. Mm -hmm. But still I did feel like, oh, it's nice she's here, but go ahead and take your place down the table, down at the end of the table, Yeah, you know. And, and just I now, I don't wanna, yeah, I know you're the moderator here, Cynthia, but no, Cynthia, ahead, you, you've like encountered some things, mm -hmm. you know, and like I said, that's what led to this whole thing. If you could talk to the, the, the ladies about some of the things you've encountered, especially the one time you're there at a, uh, at a media workout I was at and a media you stepped workout. in the ring. Yeah. Go and ahead. This specific uh, person, they were going inside and outside of the ring. And I was fairly new. I was maybe a couple, maybe a couple months new. I remember they were like talking to me and then they grabbed my thigh, like as if they were coming up in the ring and like my upper thigh right under my butt. And I'm like, and they said, oh, I, I was trying to get up in the ring because I didn't have anything to grab. And I'm like, and mind, everyone could see this. If people were filming, so I don't know. But I remember my cameraman saw what happened. I was like, okay, that was weird. And then they did their thing. And then they were getting out. They're coming down. And then they grabbed, like, under my chest. And I'm like, what is, what's going on here? It, it, and in that moment, I know that people may say, oh, I would slap him. But it's really weird when you're frozen in time because you're thinking, did this just happen? Like, what just happened to me? 
And it was just, it was very, very uncomfortable. And I thought, this isn't right. Like I, there's a couple other women. I haven't seen this person treating any other person like that, not even a guy. And I remember I had to even talk to them. I, I, it was just, just things were coming out of this person's mouth when I was talking to them. And I'm thinking, you know, you're on camera and I'm recording this. I'm, it was mortifying. So I just know, you know, it's in, in the place that I'm at, I just choose not to interview the person. I just choose not to even bother and say hi. And sadly, if um, they have fighters, I just, I respect, you know, if they have certain fighters, I'll just, I'll talk to them. But others, you know, I just, I just know my place and not to, um, you know, cause I don't want to put myself in that situation again of being there where he could touch me on accident. But, um, you know, it's just, there's things. And then other guys will say some things that they find it's funny, it's normal. And we take it like it's cheeky, but in reality, it's, it's disgusting. I always say, if you were going to talk to your sister, your mom, your daughter like this, would you? Probably the answer would be no. So why would you say that to me? But it's, it's not necessarily in boxing. It's just life. I mean, well, the problem with that is, it is it's gaslighting because when you work as a woman, as a reporter or any capacity in this industry, people use it as carte blanche to do inappropriate things. And then when you speak out on it, they say, well, what's the matter? I was just kidding with you. Yeah. It was just a joke. Yeah. You know what kind of an industry you work in. You exactly. shouldn't be in a male-dominated industry. Yeah. And, it, and it's, it's disgusting. And it's Not an invitation to touch someone, to speak to someone like that. I don't care if you work in a gas station. I don't care what your job is. You just don't have the right to do certain things to someone. But uh, that, that was just my early on experience. And, uh, you know, it's for me to hear some of the other stories, especially like Kathy and Kelly, uh, because back then it was accepted like this, what's been going on with the, the world right now, the me, the quote unquote me too movement. It's now much more prevalent. People are talking about, people are having an open conversation back then. You just, you just don't know what to do. It's, it's more accepted then. And now people are realizing it. No, this isn't right. And women, there's so many more women out there that are too scared to say anything because they feel that they'll be, they'll be judged or they'll say, well, you know, the kind of industry you work in, what do you expect? No, I don't take that. I don't expect this at all. Yeah, Kathy had a great story. If you could relive this, Kathy, in LA, you're going down the escalator. Downstairs, <laughs> yeah, yeah, we, yeah. And uh, we were, <laughs> it was after a uh, Golovkin fight. My daughter and I were both going down the stairs and, uh, leaving and um, at the forum and some guy comes running up the stairs and he first grabs my ass and then he moves on and he grabs my daughter's and my reaction this is generational my reaction was why on earth would somebody want to grab my ass like at this point in my life I don't get offended I just get kind of amazed <laughs> my daughter who, who was you know the next generation mm -hmm. um she reacted quite differently she she turned around and started ch chasing the guy well, I saw, we, we were walking down the stairs and he was coming behind us and he was grabbing so he passed us up and he and he kept running she chased him out into the parking lot and started yelling at him and saying what would your mother say if she knew you did a thing like that you know that's an assault you you know what would your mother say what would your mother say and I'm like Oh my God! Will you calm down? I was more afraid that you know what, what if this guy turns around to attack her, and I was mostly afraid because Sergey Kovalev was right behind us, and I didn't want him to get into a fist fight in the parking lot, <laughs> and I know he would have, so <laughs> to try to defend her. But uh, uh, we look at things differently. When I started out, you, um, if you wanted to be a woman in a man's world, you couldn't complain. You, you had to smile and grin and bear it, and that was really the only reaction. Um, that worked because if you complained, there was nobody out there. There was no hashtag. There was no me too. There was nothing you could say to make someone understand what you just did was inappropriate. Um, so you did. You, my, my solution was to try to laugh it off, try to ignore it. I was also somewhat protected. I didn't really, the, the, the most of the assaults and whatnot, and they are assaults. And what happened to you is a sexual assault. There's no other word for it. But those things didn't start happening to me until after my husband died. I was protected, much like Brittany was, um, while he was alive. 
But once he was gone, I remember at his wake realizing, oh my God, all bets are off. I have never been felt up and groped in my life like I was that night. And, and it was everyone. And it wasn't just boxing people. It was, it was almost- At the funeral, like, at the funeral. It's the wake, the night before the funeral. Yeah, and the funeral, I mean, it was a three day thing. It was just like a grope fest. Oh, she's she's at there the now. At the wake? Yeah. At the wake? Yeah. Two yeah. nights of the wake and at the funeral. I mean, people were walking up to me and putting their arms, you know, around my waist and then it would travel down or travel up or whatever it was. And it just kept happening over and over. And I'm standing there in the funeral home like, what am I supposed to do? This had not happened to me before in boxing. I was protected. But um, once he was gone, uh, people thought that the rules were going to be different. And uh, that, that was an adjustment. Um, yeah, but these were... Kathy, I, I, these were boxing people that were doing this, correct? Everybody, not just boxing people, men. Oh, okay. okay. It was a funeral. It was people that I grew up with. It was my husband's father's friends. It was, you know, it was mostly more older guys, but younger guys too. Mm -hmm. And they all just took a turn. And I was standing there frozen, didn't know what to do. Today, I could say, <laughs> me too, can't do that. And I've said that in, in the last couple of years when, when, uh, People have been inappropriate, and it's like, oh no, even, and usually it's some guy who's really old and he tries to get off, you know, put, put pun it off as well, I'm really old, you know. Now it's like, uh, 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 no, me too. We have words now. We didn't have those words. As I said, what happened to Cynthia was a sexual assault. That's the only words for it. And if that guy ever did it again, you should report him to somebody because, um, and I'll go with you because um, that, that is not okay. So what happens, ladies, for example, I'm a female photographer on their ringside, and something happens that, that's happened to Giandra a number of times. Someone grabs my, my, my butt. I go to you, Kelly, or, or Brittany, or, or Kathy, or Jolene. Um, what's my recourse? What do I do about it? Hey, Kelly, so, so this guy just grabbed my, my, my ass. Uh, yeah, that has yet to happen, although it did happen uh, with my own employee. Uh, Whoa. There was a situation Whoa. with a woman that doesn't work for me anymore, but everybody's familiar with Lisa Milner. And um, it ha it didn't happen with a, a reporter, but it did happen with a fighter. And uh, we had to address it right away. Um, you know, there was some talking down and talking with the fighter, how inappropriate that was. But it wasn't an assault. It was a verbal assault. It was a verbal situation that was really uncomfortable. Uh, and thank God it wasn't a, an assault. But if somebody at ringside grabs somebody's ass, uh, depending upon how the woman would react, you know, it would really kind of be up to her to make, she could report it and we could possibly talk to the individual, but I think that would be an individual assault report if she wanted to claim uh, assault and file it either with the casino or with the police. You know, we're not really the police here, but we certainly would hear out the argument and advise on what we th thought was appropriate. And maybe it would even be a credential, uh, taking away someone's credential. You, you could also report someone to the person's employer. Yes, good answer. And that could have, uh, you know, repercussions for them getting work in the future. Okay. Well, we've all heard everyone's stories, just a little tad bit of everyone's stories coming up in this industry and just as a female. What have you learned about yourself throughout this? Kathy, let's go with you first. Um, and just even well, learning about other females. I mean, my, my path was different. I started out as my husband's helper, um, as publicist, you know, and, and, and it took a very long time and a whole lot of things that happened to get to where the, the situation I'm in now, I've changed, I've grown, I've evolved. I've, I'm stronger than I used to be. I think I'm smarter than I used to be. Um, and I think that the changes in society that are slowly happening, um, and, and not fast enough, but at least they're starting to happen, um, I'm happy to see it because I remember sitting in a college classroom where we had a teacher who verbally assaulted every single woman in the class. Mm -hmm. And I remember going home to my husband and telling him this happened. And he, uh, it was, it was a, a a legal business business law class and my husband's solution was to teach me absolutely everything there was to know about business law so that when he called on me I could answer the question because he would humiliate every woman who didn't and he would 
make comments about the how the size of their brain was inverse to the size of other parts of their anatomy and things like that. And um, that was the solution. I never thought I could, when I was in college, go report the guy. That was unheard of. You wouldn't do it. If there, if nobody would have listened. They wouldn't have cared. They would have said, listen, get used to it, lady. This is the way it is. You want to go to college? You have to put up with it. Um, I'm happy to say that if, you know, if that ever happened today, I, I, I or my daughter or any of you would know what to do. And that person would be out, would be out on their butt the next day. So we have come a long way, but we've got a lot longer to go. Kelly? Uh, yeah, just to revisit that other thought on um, my employee, there was actually a media member that did say something uh, to her that was, you know, you're an effing bitch. And so that was something that I had to deal with as the company president uh, to make sure that um, that he understood this would never going to happen again. It was kind of like a warning, but you know, it was the situa It was a situ a situational incident that happened, but it upset Lisa greatly. And I did take it upon myself to address that with the media member uh, who was a man. And uh, we were able to resolve that and with a very good understanding that he would never ever say that to any of my employees again, let alone me. Um, and I do appreciate that there's so many more women in the rooms um, talking and, and being a part of boxing. I think that's a great uh, a great thing to see because I, I do feel like I felt pretty alone in my early days, um, except for again, people like Kathy who came before me. And, uh, but to give women uh, the opportunity to compete, you know, to compete and help the media members who need help, who are starting out to understand the ropes of what boxing media means and, and is all about. I happen to be a rule follower. So maybe when I come across this tough, it's because I do try to abide by the rules and understanding of AP journalism, uh, which applies to my, um, how, I, how I handle my, my media uh, responsibility. But it's good to see women. I, I think that we can all pitch in there together and watch each other's backs maybe a little bit more than we do. And when something distressful does happen, feel comfortable that we could come to each other and, you know, gang up on that person. Thank you. Jolene Mazzone. What I've learned um, being a woman in this sport is one of the easiest things that I think we all take for granted and don't do is to think like a man. It's the easiest thing to do. And I've learned that with, no offense, Joe. Gotcha. I think better um, than me anyway. <laughs> making deals and just, you know, I think I'm, I can't speak for everybody, but I might be a little different. I'm a little rough around the edges. So I really don't take shit. And when somebody's trying to be rough back with me, it's easy to just think like them. And I know how to get what I want without them knowing that I got it. It's just, that's what you need to do is just, Put yourself in their shoes and think like a man and act like it when you have to sometimes. It's okay. Because men like to act like victims all the time. So what's the difference? You know, like, I, that's what I've learned most about being in this business is I think it's really easy to think like a man. And it's, it's about dealing with, because we're dealing with men, we're dealing with, people in all different you know places around the world we're dealing with eastern europeans we're dealing with everything you have to bring yourself down to their left where everybody's different so you have to kind of bring yourself down to them to understand them and they'll respect you so much more you know opposed to me going to everybody i've been in this business for 23 years don't tell i don't Pull that shit. You know, tell me your story and I'll tell you mine. But my biggest thing that I've learned is think like a man. It's the easiest thing. Brittany Goosen. Any different? I didn't have to deal with the things you guys have had to deal with. And I 
have witnessed it to a certain extent, but um, okay, good I, the only issue I had, I had a problem with a booking agent once he called and he tried to be like a tough guy on the phone and tell me how threatening his family was. And I was like, whoa, we're gonna talk about crazy families. Like <laughs> we can go. But um, he was like, you're just some dumb bimbo or broad or whatever that answers calls. And I was like, hmm. But my dad gave him a phone call. Actually, I keep the card on my desk. <laughs> I got a big bouquet of flowers. He called me the C word. So um, he apologized and then we never booked one of his guys ever again. So I am lucky that I have such like a shield around me almost. And um, I guess I didn't know how lucky I was until I heard everyone else's stories. So hopefully it's not a, a continued situation for these women. And But you also have to act the part, you know, I was telling Joe in my conversation with him that you can't be a groupie. You can't sleep around with these guys and then you know expect this respect too on the other side you have to you do have to work harder it, it is what it is we're women we have to hold ourselves higher and if you want that respect and you want that uh you know vision of you then you have to act like it too all right thank you Brittany. uh nancy um, I think, I think this sport, I started in 2011, I believe. Giandra and Christina Poncher were one of the first women I, I met in boxing. And I'm not, I'm completely not the same person that I was when I started. I, I was in a little corner, intimidated, and Christina Poncher pushed me. She said, Nancy, get out there in the media. You know, you got to do your job. Don't let these men intimidate you. Little by little, you know, I learned this is a humble sport. This is a humble sport full of so many egos, you know. Our job is to make these fights happen for the fighters to be safe. And, and like Kelly said, follow the rules. I think it's really important to follow the rules. So I think being here, it has made me stronger. The growth I've seen in myself, I mean, Honestly, like I, I was shocked when, when that turned around for me, when I wasn't that shy person anymore, when I, when I could go out there. I, I deserve the respect that I, that I have right now. I have people that this industry is full. Yeah, it has its bad seeds, but honestly, it has its good men as well. Lee Samuels has been one of my mentors and, and huge supporters since day one. Uh, Lee Samuels, Ricardo Jimenez, Israel Vasquez, um, and then after that, you know, now Mauricio, I know Mauricio Suleiman, one time somebody, one time there was a guy from USA Boxing that sent me this horrible email. It was, it was horrible. And then I saw Mauricio, you know, Mauricio was CC'd. I have never seen anybody have my back the way he did. You know, I have, there are great men in this sport. They are, and they will protect you. But there are also women that are going about it the wrong way in boxing. And, and sometimes because of them, we have to deal with, with, oh, well, they must be easy or whatever. You know, you, you do an interview bouncing your boobs around, it's gonna get a lot of views, cool. But it doesn't, <laughs> it, it's not gonna give you the respect that Callie, Kathy, Brittany, you, all of you have done, deserve. They're not gonna respect you. You know, the Instagram, famous people, they think that because they're showing their boobs and doing it, they're not, a fighter's not going to want to be like, hey, yeah, he is going to be like, hey, because you're putting yourself out there like that. So be careful. If you want to be in boxing, if you want to be a professional in boxing, which is a very small industry and people talk, give yourself the respect you deserve, period. And Giandra, last but not least. Two, <clears throat> two things that have been very important to me is the importance of women. I haven't worked, this is the first industry I ever worked in that wasn't dominated by women. So it is very, very important to me to connect with women when I see them at sporting events with each and all of you. I like to spend my time. I like to get to know you as people, not as coworkers. And 
I truly, truly am happy whenever I see each and all of you. What, relationships with women are very, very important to me. And just having those people who can see things from your point of view, who can empathize, who've experienced. So that's two things. Uh, connecting with women <clears throat> has been very important to me since I started. Number two, there is no job that is too little for you that you shouldn't know. I try to make it a point to know more than the people around me, whether it's from an editorial standpoint, whether it's a research standpoint, from a technology standpoint. I like to know what's going on around me so that if I have to shift or pivot into something different, that that pivot is easier and I can pivot ahead of everybody else. I'm uber competitive, but I think you can be competitive and still be a kind person, a gentle person, a person who gets along with others and can be positive. And, and you know, I, that's just how I like to get down. I like to be a positive person in the space. I like to be positive to other people and helpful to other people, Some you know, but I've learned not to do that to my own detriment. So those are things that um, I've learned since this journey started. I love the lady, every lady's story, what happened on this panel from what Joe has said. I haven't read, obviously we haven't read any of uh, the stories that are about to come out. When is that? It's been happening for so long and so often. And what still gets me is hear about it in Hollywood. You hear about it in business, you hear about it in politics. And what stirred me to do this is that um, I got to look at myself. I don't think um, I'm not perfect by any means. I don't think, I mean, you all, you ladies have dealt with me in one way or another. Um, uh, but it amazes me just how ignorant, how ignorant men are that we have to take accountability and we don't. Uh, it bothers me. Uh, and I'm telling you all, I'm telling you, I'm not asking you, I'm telling you. Uh, I'm president of the Boxing Writers Association. I, I, I got one of my guys, one of my members that does something that they shouldn't be doing. If someone's grabbing someone's butt or something like that, I'm telling you, I want to know. I will boot them so damn far out of the organization, they won't see the light of that. I, I, um, and this has caused me to take a look at myself a little bit because I have that tendency. And, and I spoke about this with all of you. Uh, certainly I know Jolene and, and Nancy, uh, about the, the, the honey and the, and the, and the sweetheart thing. And because uh, um, I'm, maybe it's a uh, Latin background, my Italian background, uh, I refer to my nieces as, as honey and sweetheart. And, and I mean that in an endearing way, but maybe I have to start taking a look at myself sometimes when I talk to a woman, just, you know, thanks, sweetie. I appreciate that. You know, and, and that is, that's 20 years, 25 years of learned behavior that, maybe I have to start taking a look at because maybe some women would be offended by that. Um, the other thing that I like is the fact that, um, I like the fact that you women are, I think you're a lot stronger than I think you realize. Um, I empathize with the fact that, and, and, and please forgive me for what probably may sound sexist a little bit, but women is the underdogs. Am I, I'm gonna ask you all, am I wrong with that? Correct me. Help me out here. Educate me. You know, that, that women are the underdogs to a point, and, and I can relate to some degree to that. Um, but I also like to fight in all of this, all seven of you, to one degree or another, you know, because we all wouldn't be on this. None of us would be on this. If you succumb to, to any of the, excuse me, any of the bullshit that you talk, you know, you're, 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 you're seven samurai. You really are. You know, I don't know if some of you would like to get up in the gear with the swords and everything, but, you know, to one degree or another, you, you are, and you, 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 you need to be admired for all that. Um, and I'm happy, I'm happy I'm, I'm, I've gotten involved with this. I'm happy that I'm doing this. I'm happy that you're doing this, Cynthia. I'm happy all you women are involved with this. Um, but educate me, correct me, in terms of women as, as, as the underdog. Help me, help me out here. Am, am I wrong? I don't think women are the underdog. <laughs> I think my dog is the dog. I think that women have just learned how to navigate better okay. because we've had to. And I think we're resourceful. And I think we are 
accustomed to doing more with less. Mm -hmm. And I don't think that's an underdog quality. I think it's just okay. a resourceful quality. Okay. I think where are the underdogs? Absolutely. Um, but I don't care to think, as my, think of myself as an underdog. Mm -hmm. Going into situations, <clears throat> I don't think of myself, but I know what the big picture is. Mm -hmm. It's the big picture we're gonna all have to deal with for a long time, but going into situations, there is no way in hell I'm a fucking underdog. But there are a lot of others. And going back, the problem with a lot of females within this business is they ruin it for us strong fucking women. And it pisses me off. So that's why I commend Kelly when she said, and I believe it was Kelly, I'm not going to do this unless it's the right people. And I feel 100% because I've been in situations where we're going to do a woman thing, we're going to do a one thing. Who is it? And they tell me certain women, I'm not involved. Because I'm not, I don't, that's how they choose to, to act and do their thing. That's fine. I don't give a shit. But I think that all of us are stronger women. We've been through it. Brittany hasn't been through it, thank God. But she also came in like a bull. She came from the family of bulls. So, which is great. I came in, I didn't come in with the family, but I came in with the bull. I mean, I get suspended in school all the time for fighting. You know, I actually, I never didn't tell you this story, Joe, but I actually punched a guy in the face. <laughs> I forgot about this for calling me a bitch. And he swung back. <laughs> and a couple God. of my guys from Brooklyn had to take him in the back room. Good, good for them. That happened right. actually at a Zab Judah fight in Connecticut. He turned around, mm -hmm. me a bitch. I turned around and threw a right hand at him. That's mm -hmm. how I deal with it. Mm -hmm. This was 2001. So, you know, I, I just think that, unfortunately, we're in a society that may never change, and it's changing little by little, but I don't look at of any of us as underdogs, but I think that reality is we are. No, I agree uh, when you say about underdog because men are always so used to being superior. And for me, I look at it as, I don't care if I'm the underdog. It's just, I know I'm better than you. I know I work yeah. harder than you. I do. I, I'm better at asking questions. I'm better at researching. I'm just a better person all around. I can let them think all they want. They can, they can think they're king of the, of, of the hill. Absolutely. But I just yeah. know that my work speaks for itself. My work mm -hmm. speaks for when there's other uh, people that come in, uh, there's other reporters that I didn't even know who were involved and it caused a big, big controversy, a, like a sexual uh, sexual assault controversy amongst uh, female reporters. I don't know, I go, they, are, they don't speak for me, but it does make us look bad that if one reporter does it, they think all the women in boxing do it. No, that is not true. And but, let, me, um, let me also, Cynthia, let me show I'm not saying all women are underdog by I me. Mean, I, I can relate to it because I'm that guy too. I'm the guy that can relate to it because I know that fight in terms of being the underdog, in terms of having the scrap and claw and be dad and things like that. And that's the context that I want to put that in. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. Oh, no. I, oh, by the way, by the way, listen, is it okay if we call Kathy Do with the godmother going forward? Sure. <laughs> we have the godfather from... Uh, what was that? Old school, the godfather. Kathy would be the godmother. <laughs> it's whatever. It's whatever. No, but I, that's, uh, that's, that is my point. And I know that uh, these ladies here, because I do want to wrap it up because I know people have got to get back. People are at the bubble right now. But uh, these ladies are here on the panel, not everyone in boxing are on this panel, but there are, other, there are many other women that are bold, brave, fear, uh, fearless, phenomenal women, just like the six here. I thank you, Brittany Goosen, Kelly Swanson, Jolene Mazzone, Kathy Duva, Jandra LaBeouf, and Nancy Rodriguez for uh, joining me on this Zoom panel. And of course, uh, Joe Santaloquito, thank you for writing about all of us. And I can't wait for people to hear our story and to listen and understand where these women and myself are coming from and just to pay attention and keep this conversation going. Agreed. Okay. Agreed. Okay. Thank you so much. Thank All right. So Thank you so much. All Thank right, you. guys.
Bye, guys. Thank you. I'm Cynthia Conte. Bye. You guys at the fights. Bye, guys.